All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to cover a very neat rational roots Putnam problem, which Black Pen Red Pen recommended to me. And the question is, for which integer n greater or equal to 1 does the following polynomial have a rational root? So the polynomial is x to the n plus 2 plus x to the n plus 2 minus x to the n. And rational roots just means a root that is a fraction. So not square root of 2 or anything. And so first of all, notice, before we even start, uh, if n is even, then you just have the sum of three non-negative terms. And the only way it could be 0 is if all the terms are 0, which is impossible. So already we can say for even n, there is no rational root. This is so no root if n is even, you literally can't even because there is no rational root here. And also, uh, how, what about for n equals 1? Then it turns out, yes, there is a rational root because then you just do x plus 2 plus x plus 2 minus x, which simplifies to x plus 4. And the only way this is 0 is if x equals minus 4. Right. Very good. And I want to show basically that this is the only case. In other words, it has a rational root if and only if n equals 1. So therefore, from now, assume that n, first of all, is odd, because by case 1, and also it's greater than or equal to 3. So the first odd number bigger than 1. And then we want to find something interesting. All right, and you'll see, surprisingly, the proof is very similar to the proof that square root of 2 is irrational. And therefore, just like that proof, suppose, again, n is odd and greater or equal to 3, and suppose that x equals a over b is a rational root of our polynomial. And again, without loss of generality, you can assume that a and b have no common factors. Because if, let's say, we had 2 over 4, you could just simplify this to 1 over 2. And then what we want to do is simply plug in x into our polynomial. So what we get is simply a over b to the, x to the n plus 2 plus a over b to the n plus 2 minus a over b to the n. And the point is, we can put this on a common denominator. All right, so again, you plug in x equals a over b in your polynomial. You put it on a common denominator, so a to the n over b to the n, 2b or not 2b, but in this case, 2b plus a over b to the n plus 2b minus a over b to the n. And the point is, you can write this as 2b plus a to the n over b to the n, and then 2b minus a to the n over b to the n. And remember, since it's a root, this equals 0. And the point is, we can cancel out the b to the n. And then you just get an equation with, a, with uh, pure powers of n, if you want, of integer powers of n. But now remember, n is odd. That's why it turns out you can actually write this as a difference of odd powers. Because 2b minus a is the same as minus a minus 2b. So since n is odd, it becomes the following. a to the n plus 2b plus a to the n minus a minus 2b to the n. And now remember, there's this beautiful formula for differences uh, of nth powers, which is just a to the n minus b to the n, that is a minus b times a to the n minus 1 plus some junk plus b to the n minus 1. So let's apply this with this difference of powers. And then you get the following. All 
All right, so you get a to the n plus, so this junk, minus this junk, and then plus some other integers. And you'll see it doesn't really matter here. And then this you can just simplify to the following a to the n plus, so 2b plus a minus a plus 2b just becomes 4b, and then some junk. And we know this is 0. But here's the point, 4b that is even, very even in fact, and in particular what do we get? So we get 4b times whatever integer we have is even. And therefore, a to the n plus even is 0, so that therefore a to the n must be even. Hence, a to the n is even, and therefore a is even. So we can actually say a equals to 2c for some integer c. And let's see, no pun intended, what we get here. All right, so the next step is go back to the equation a to the n plus 2b plus a to the n minus a minus 2b to the n. And, um, and now plug in the fact that we have a equals 2c. And if you find that too confusing, just go back to your original equation and plug in x equals 2c over b. And therefore, what we get is the following. All right, so as I said, we go back to our original equation, okay, here, and then we just plug in the fact that a equals 2c. So you plug in 2c here, and the point is, uh, here a factor of 2 comes out at every step. So you get 2 to the n times c to the n plus 2 to the n, b plus c to the n minus 2 to the n times c minus b to the n equals 0. And then the point is, the 2 to the n's cancel out, and you're left with c and n, so c to the n plus b plus c to the n minus c minus b to the n equals 0. But here's the point. We can just apply the same spiel to um, this difference of powers. So use the fact that, remember, a to the n minus b to the n is a minus b times some junk. And therefore what we get, we get c to the n plus, so this minus this, b plus b minus c minus b times some junk equals 0. So t c to the n, and this simplifies to b plus c minus c plus b, so 2b times some junk equals 0. But then the beautiful thing is, uh, we have the same argument as before, because this is even. So this whole thing is even, and therefore c to the n is even, and therefore c is even, and I can't Steven. <laughs> so c is even, and therefore c equals 2d for some integer d. And now this is quite interesting, because uh, you're like, well, we can just apply the same technique for the next step. However, in fact, this is not true, and we have to resort to a slightly different technique, and you'll see. And for this, let's go back to our equation c to the n plus b plus c to the n plus b minus c to the n equals 0, and let's plug in the fact that c equals 2d. And let's see what we get. Now, as I said, you can apply the same technique again, and you'll see it doesn't quite work. So here we have to resort to something different. But notice, here we have a plus b to the n, and then a minus b to the n. Well, this just yells out to, be, to use the binomial theorem. So let me quickly remind you what the binomial theorem says. So all that it says in this case is that a plus b to the n is just a to the n, kind of like a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So a to the n plus n, a to the n minus 1 times b. And the point is that each term, the powers of a decrease, so from n minus 1 to n minus 2, but the powers of b increase from 1 to 2, etc., etc., and those coefficients are just n choose k. And there's a nice proof of this, by the way, I did in French, 
in um, of, the, of the proof of that binomial theorem. And notice this is perfect because here we have a b plus 2d to the n, so we can just expand this out. And let's see what we get. All right, so here what we get, I know it looks horrible, but all I did is we still have this 2 to the n d to the n factor, and here all I did, I just expanded out b plus 2d to the n. So we get b to the n plus n times b to the n minus 1 times 2d plus n choose 2. So this decreases to get b to the n minus 2. This increases to get 2d squared. And you just continue until you get 2d to the n. And well, same thing here, except all you do, you replace 2d by minus 2d. All right, now I know it looks horrible, but there is a nice simplification. And by the way, it should look horrible. It's the Putnam exam. What do you e expect? Now, that said, notice this minus 2d cancels out with this 2d. This doesn't cancel out because we have a square. And basically, every odd term cancels out. So here we have 2d to the n. n is odd. So this also cancels out. And then the nice thing is we have the same terms over and over again. So it's just two times whatever this sum is. All right, and therefore we get the following. So two to the n d to the n here. And then as I said, each term is counted twice. So two times whatever this thing is. And I put the rest under a junk. And the point is the junk you'll see has a lot of even terms because here we have 4d squared. I think the next term would be something like 16d fourth or something. So very even. And in particular, notice there are two nice things happening. First of all, this 2 here cancels out. So we get 2 and here we have 2 to the n minus 1. And remember, n is greater than or equal to 3. So this is actually even. And well, here we have a b to the n. And what about this term? Well, look, n choose 2 times 4. That's just n times n minus 1 over 2 times 4. And that just becomes 2 times n times n minus 1. So in fact, this term is also even. And also the junk is even because, as I said, we'll just have so many uh, powers of 2. So you can actually check it with the definition of n choose k. So this is also even. Right. And therefore, what do we get? Very interesting. We have an even term plus b to the n plus even equals 0. So as I said, b to the even plus b to the n plus even equals 0. But this just forces b to the n to be even. So b to the n is even. So in fact, b is even. I can't be even. Uh, <laughs> and OK, but that's a problem. Because remember, a was even as well. So a and b are even. But then that's an issue because then they have a common factor of 2, just like in the proof that square root of 2 is irrational. A and B have a common factor. And that's a contradiction, a contradiction with the fact that, with the assumption that this polynomial has a rational root. And that's why um, we are done. So yeah, 10 points for us. Um, that said, uh, it's quite an interesting proof, I have to say. Because first, well, you apply that one technique. Turns out you apply the same technique again. And then for the third one, you have to apply a different technique. That's kind of crazy, in my opinion. But as I said, it's a Putnam problem. What do you expect? All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.